guys, we're going to talk about IR lasers. IR lasers are infrared. Infrared is invisible to the naked eye, but they can be seen very clearly under night vision, and they're going to be used for targeting, aiming, pointing things out to other teams, uh, to aerial assets, things like that, uh, under goggles. And basically, it's a very covert way of communicating and uh, then also targeting getting your hits. Uh, where the enemy cannot see, unless, of course, they have night vision as well, in which case you're going to probably be in for a rough night. But basically, we're going to talk about the restricted lasers, because I know that we've got some government um, uh, uh, customers that are going to be checking out these videos for information purposes. So uh, basically, restricted lasers are restricted uh, as Class 3B, 3 Bravo, and that's basically a medical-grade laser. And it's restricted by the FDA, the uh, U.S. Food and Drug Administration. I know it sounds weird, but that's who basically writes the restrictions on these lasers. Uh, Class 3 Bravo lasers are pretty much any laser uh, that is going to be above uh, 5 milliwatt. And, uh, and a 5 milliwatt and above laser is actually dangerous to the eye. You see, your, since your eyes can't see in the, the infrared light spectrum, you've got various spectrums. You've got uh, the visible light spectrum, which is what we see, and then above that you have ultraviolet, below that you have infrared. And in the infrared light spectrum, uh, your brain, since your eyes can't see it, is not going to tell your eyes to close, look away, or anything like that if a, uh, a laser, uh, an infrared laser in this case, is being shown into your eyes. And therefore, uh, it can cause severe damage and permanent blindness. Uh, and you're not really going to know it until you've got a problem. So basically, that's why the FDA restricts them from individual purchase. They can only be purchased by government agencies, federal, uh, state, local, municipal, county, that kind of stuff. And they have to be purchased on a government letterhead. They have to be purchased with a government purchase order. They cannot be purchased by individuals. Uh, not even individual law enforcement or individual military personnel are allowed to get them. They have to be bought at a unit, department, or agency level. So moving on, let's take a look at some of the most common uh, modern lasers that are available for the, uh, the, the restricted government market. Um, we're going to start out with uh, uh, the ubiquitous ANPEQ-2. The PEQ-2 uh, is a laser that has been around for a while. This is uh, one of the lasers that our guys first started out with uh, uh, going overseas in Afghanistan in the early 2000s. Um, it's a larger laser, runs off AA batteries, and basically gives you an IR pointer and an IR flood. Now there's the, the difference is you've got uh, the pointer is going to be your IR laser, so to speak, and your IR flood is basically an illuminator. So it's kind of like an infrared flashlight. Again, you can't see it with the naked eye, but in those certain situations uh, where Mother Nature doesn't want to play ball uh, by giving you good ambient light or you're in an area such as heavy tree canopy or a cave or uh, in a, a structure that is blocking a lot of the ambient starlight, moonlight, things like that, you're going to want to turn on your illuminator to give you that extra bit of, of infrared uh, uh, light that your goggles will be able to pick up. Um, you do want to be careful though because infrared light does tend to flatten your image out. At least it you, you perceive it to be flattened out. What is in fact happening is you're filling in the contrast, the darker areas, with light, uh, just as you would uh, a visible white light um, with the naked eye. So what happens with goggles, because you can't perceive color under goggles, everything looks green, you're basically uh, relying on that contrast to give you some depth and to, to help you uh, resolve images. And uh, when you start filling in the darker areas, um, it's going to start uh, flattening that, that image out and it might make it a little bit more difficult for you to perceive what is, uh, uh, especially at different ranges, what is downrange from you. Um, so the, the PEC-2 is, uh, is still available. Um, it's a very good laser. It's made by uh, L3 Insight Technology. And, uh, you know, it's a polymer housing that uh, basically just bolts on to your M1913 Picatinny rail. Uh, it can be placed on uh, different locations on the guns. And it can even be used as a handheld pointer to communicate with aerial assets or maybe other teams perhaps that are on a, a further ridge line, things like that. And the, the reason why you might want to do that is to maybe point out a gun emplacement or something that is outside of your team's range uh, that is maybe putting effective fire down on you. And you need that other uh, maybe gunship or another team that, to maneuver to it and basically take out the, the threat so that you can continue on mission. So... 
Um, one of the things that the government wanted past uh, the, uh, the PEC-2 was uh, the addition of a visible laser. Visible lasers are useful for many things from uh, threat de-escalation. Uh, a lot of bad guys, whether they're um, in, you know, uh, U.S. Uh, uh, domestic or um, terrorists overseas, they're used to having guns pointed in their face and looking down the barrel. And, and to, um, you know, normal people, having a gun pointed at them tends to, to get a, a response. But to a lot of bad guys who are normally in that culture, they're basically going to look at that gun and, and maybe not have that same, uh, that, that, that same thought process of, you know what, I'm going to stop doing whatever nefarious activity that I'm doing that's pissing this guy off. Um, they might continue uh, towards you, things like that. But there's something very psychological that happens when that visible laser appears on center mass. Uh, you know that that's, hey, there's going to be a hole there in a second if I continue on. I'm about a finger, you know, uh, a pound of trigger pressure away from, uh, from having a real bad day. So, um, you know, it's not going to work all the time, but they're very, very good uh, at, at de-escalating and letting someone know, hey, look, I got you dead to rights. You know, let's, uh, let's rethink what you're doing. Uh, they're also very good at, uh, at silent communication with other teams, uh, other team members, especially um, when you're not using night vision goggles. And they're also very good when you're uh, using a gas mask. Uh, shooting with a gas mask, even when you have a red dot sight, things like that, can be difficult because you have to still cock your head and, and camp the weapon in and try and find your, your optic. Um, or your iron sights and it's just it's not fast but when you have that visible laser and you're going uh, into a structure uh, that when, when you don't have that direct sunlight on the visible laser the visible laser becomes even more visible and uh, it can it can really do wonders is uh, uh, to having a, a quick target acquisition and t uh, target engagement so the government wanted that and it basically gave them the uh, the PEC-15. It's also made by L3 Insight. Uh, this is going to give you uh, basically three devices in one. You've got an IR laser, you've got uh, your IR illuminator, and then you've got the visible laser. Um, so as you can see, it's a more compact unit, runs off of CR123 battery. Um, it's got uh, your, your various functions here by just turning the dial. Um, basically, you want to know, you, you should always be very familiar with your gear. Uh, so that you don't have to go fumbling around trying to figure out what point uh, I've, I've got the, the device set at. You should know at what point around the, the clock, so to speak, the, um, the uh, little knob here is pointed at so that uh, you can continue on mission and continue uh, engaging the threats. So uh, basically this, uh, this PEC-15 is the, uh, the current standard issue. It's also known as the ATPL. Now, another major company, um, uh, Laser Devices Inc., LDI, makes what's called the PEC-15 Alpha. The PEC-15 Alpha basically does the exact same thing as the PEC-15. They just, uh, it, it's just a different manufacturer. So you've got your three things. You've got your visible and IR lasers, and you have your IR illuminator. Um, but uh, what LDI does is they manufacture their lasers in a machined aircraft aluminum housing and they have quick detach throw lever style uh, mounts. So uh, it's basically, it's a different setup. Uh, the controls are placed in a slightly different, uh, different place than, uh, than the L3 device, um, but also runs off CR123 battery. Uh, very robust. Um, you know, these are also downrange fighting the global war on terror and uh, they're also very heavily used by law enforcement. Uh, but the military basically denotes it as the PEC-15 Alpha because they have to differentiate it from the PEC-15. But uh, this is the D-Ball A2 dual beam aiming laser. Now we'll, uh, we're going to start taking a look at uh, BE Myers. This is the BE Myers Islid laser. Uh, this can be weapon mounted uh, or it can be a handheld laser. But basically this is going to be a very high power laser system. The high power laser systems are going to be used for reaching out a lot further. Um, the weapon mounted lasers for target engagement tend to be uh, between 30 and 50 milliwatt, um, which is going to get you out several thousand yards. Um, you're measuring kilometers when you're talking about uh, uh, these, uh, the, the B.E. Myers uh, Islid lasers. Uh, basically, you just pop the, the cap here, and uh, this is kind of like a 
the the hand of God. You you kind of just hold it out there and uh, and talk to the the eye in the sky, the the gunship, and say, all right, we need that to disappear. And uh, presto, it disappears. So this is something that's going to generally be used by uh, attack P, uh, you know, JTACs. Uh, a lot of special operations units tend to carry these for uh, you know team leaders. Uh, just communicating with the birds in the sky. They can be seen out kilometers under goggles. Uh, very, very high power, very effective lasers. And they also have applications for uh, uh, our you know, border patrol, guys that are working in very open desert flat environments that uh, are also communicating with, uh, with aerial assets. So another thing that, uh, that I'd like to discuss is placement of the lasers. Um, I tend to recommend, unless you have mission critical gear that has to go at the 12 o'clock position uh, on, on your rail, I tend to recommend putting the laser at the 12 o'clock position because all lasers are going to come with a pigtail switch. And the pigtail switch is basically it's a remote pressure switch that allows you to activate the laser from uh, basically a cable that's attached to the laser. Um, now, anyone will tell you that, that has experience with this stuff, that is the weakest link when it comes to a laser. Uh, the, the pigtail switches break. I, I've never met a pigtail switch I have uh, not been able to break. I hate pigtail switches. Um, if I absolutely have to use it, I'll use it, but I try and avoid it like the plague if I can. So what I like to do is mount the laser at the 12 o'clock position, and that gives you some, uh, some advantages when zeroing your, your weapon and then also making shots uh, at various distances, but uh, it gives me a, a, a straight point of activation for the laser, and I don't have to worry about having the pigtail switch somewhere where I might accidentally bump it uh, during the course of operation, moving to and from an objective, having a negligent discharge of, of laser, especially bad if you've got the, the laser set at the, uh, the visible uh, portion that uh, you, know, you don't want the bad guys to see where you and your team are. So what I like to do is I will have this, uh, this laser at the 12 o'clock position, and if I need to actuate it, I can just reach up over the top with my thumb and activate it this way. Um, there's a fire button directly on the laser. Uh, same thing with the PEC-15 Alpha. Uh, they put their fire button right here at the top, so I can reach up over the top here, activate it this way as well, and uh, it's, it's basically it's a deliberate action. So, so when I need to activate that laser, I know that this is how I'm going to activate that laser, and this is going to give me a much lesser chance of a negligent discharge of that laser. So that pretty much covers the vast majority of uh, the uh, restricted lasers that we offer here at TNBC. Again, they are restricted. They can only be purchased at an agency, department, or unit level. They cannot be purchased by individuals. So if uh, your agency is looking to uh, get into some of these higher power lasers, please uh, take a look at our website, uh, read some of the specs, give us a call, shoot us an email, and uh, we can get the proper paperwork out to you and, uh, and start the bid rolling. So again, thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.